Good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome to another episode of Immigrant Success Stories by Amir Ismail and Associates. My name is Amir Ismail, and I'm an authorized citizenship and immigration practitioner based in Toronto, Canada. And I've been assisting clients in their immigration matters since 1991. As we all know, Canada is a welcoming country with unique Canadian culture that welcomes and embraces diversity and celebrates and promotes multiculturalism. Canada was the first nation to adopt multiculturalism as an official Canadian policy in 1971. And I would like to quote the Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, diversity is Canada's strength. So people from different backgrounds and different circumstances come together to form this great nation. Um, immigrants are no doubt considered the backbone of growth in Canada. And a quarter of the Canadian population is either foreign born or born to immigrant parents. Um, we have all kinds of uh, visible minorities from all parts of the world, and the uh, majority of them we know that belong to South Asian community, Chinese, African, Caribbeans, Filipinos, Latin Americans, Arabs, uh, and you name it. And we have 10 plus religions we practice here, and nearly 200 plus uh, languages are spoken in Canada. So in my 28 years of immigration practice and having assisted more than 25,000 people in making Canada their home. Majority of my clients have been young professionals who came to Canada to enhance their education, polish their skills, and make their mark in their respective fields. We are pleased to have another similar individual with us tonight. Mr. Walid Saeed Faridi is um, an immigrant from Pakistan. He's a young accounting professional whom I met in my Toronto office a few years back and let me tell you, I was straight away impressed with his personality, uh, determination, and focus to make Canada his home. And I'm glad I was with him in his journey to become a Canadian permanent resident. He had, at that time, uh, just completed his studies in Canada and wanted to apply for immigration. So today's uh, uh, appointment with him, uh, interview with him, will not only benefit uh, the professionals who are interested in immigrating to Canada, but also... Uh, the students, the international students, because he has studied in Canada as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, Mr. Walid Said Faridi. Hi, Hello, everyone. How are you doing? I hope everyone is okay. Hello, Mr. Amir. How are you? I'm good. Uh, everyone is okay. We just had a snowfall. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, that is true. Start. That is true. <laughs> yeah. So, have you had your mittens and your jackets and your Yes, goals. all the gloves, all the hats, everything. You have to keep yourself covered. I am just uh, recovered from a flu. That's a common thing here, but it's one of the best things uh, of Canada, the snow. I love it, and my family also loves it. So it's one of the best things you can have here. Right, yes. So I think uh, we can start our, our interview. Uh, people are interested in knowing your story, your journey to Canada. And I remember when we met, you had completed your studies and you were interested in applying for immigration. Um, there are various ways people immigrate to Canada. They can come here directly. They can come here, study, and then immigrate. Uh, they can do it even quickly. Uh, I, I think that was the case in your application because you already had work experience. So you didn't have to wait a lot to apply because you were able to yes. claim points in your experience. So I would start uh, with asking about your your uh, brief background and then I'll build up questions about your experience uh, of yes, Canada sir. as a student first and then as an immigrant. Yes, so I can introduce my uh, journey to Canada. I came here as a student, international student, and in, I came from Pakistan, uh, Karachi. I finished my A-levels education in Pakistan and I was pursuing the ACCA qualification, which a lot of accounting professionals in Pakistan have pursued in their careers. So I came here as an international student pursuing ACCA qualification in a private college. There were at that time, I think it's no longer applicable that you can come here for a private college, but I was able to come here in a private college and I studied ACCA qualification. But soon after I switched to a uh, Canadian uh, college, the certified college called Seneca College. I did my accounting finance diploma there, three-year program. And during that program, I pursued my CPA qualification. I was doing those exams, self-studying on the side. So that's basically my educational background. 
I finished my CPA exams. I finished my diploma. And during the whole process, I finished my bachelor's education as well through ACCA program. And around that time, I applied for the work permit, postgraduate work permit. And while I was about to apply for immigration, I met you, Mr. Amir. I pursued him as my immigration consultant. And he assisted me. Where, uh, he really helped me a lot, advised me all the uh, pros and cons, all the do's and don'ts to do for the immigration process. And uh, alhamdulillah, I was, uh, I was able to successfully get uh, PR immigration. And I'm on PR status as of now. Okay, that's that was quite a journey. And uh, thank you for the appreciation. It was a pleasure assisting you. So uh, starting with the uh, student experience you have, um, you know, one of the biggest reasons students choose to come to Canada is the quality of a Canadian education and Canadian degrees and diplomas are widely recognized. Yep. I would say as comparable to those from the United States, uh, Australia and the United Kingdom. Um, so uh, what was your motive behind uh, choosing Canada? Did you research and did you make uh, a, a, a you know deliberate decision to, to choose Canada? And did you also have plans to settle down here permanently? I always had plans to settle down in Canada. That was one of the best um, aspects of coming to Canada in other countries like the UK, or Australia, or uh, the United States. I don't think the process is this much uh, simpler, easy to understand and welcoming to everyone, people of all backgrounds. That's why I always thought if I go abroad, Canada would be my destination. But I'll be honest with you, I was very young. I was coming here at a very young age, so I, I did not really plan my whole career ahead. But uh, thank God everything went very well because this country will not let you down. Whoever comes here, people of any background, any career, any qualification, there is bulk of opportunities in this country. All you have to do is stay committed, stay focused on your career, think about your family, think about yourself, most importantly, and this country will treat you fairly with justice. And that's what happened to me. I came here. I knew that my career would be within the accounting field, accounting finance. And when I came here, my purpose was to continue ACCA. But when I moved here, I understood, I researched about what are my career options. I, I realized that I need a Canadian education. If I have no other bachelor's education from Pakistan, you need right. to have some sort of diploma or degree here, which is what I pursued. I did a three-year diploma, which really helped me with my immigration with all the points system and all. But during that time, I also planned ahead for pursuing the CPA qualification, which is a very good reputed qualification, not just in Canada, but throughout the world. So that is what I pursued. I have finished that now and I am working in a CPA firm at the moment, which is my natural transition from study to career. OK, that is uh, that is great to know. So, um, so you know, Canadian education, of course, uh, it, it is valuable. Um, in fact, 17 Canadian universities are ranked in the top 500 of the OS World University ranking of 2020. And in fact, Canada uh, is ranked in top 100 of reputable sources like Times Higher Education World University ranking, Shanghai rankings, academic rankings of the World University. So you can, you, your decision was correct when it comes to um, when it came to you choosing the country uh, for your higher studies but i understand you did your diploma from seneca and um, you, you rightly said that it was important for you to do that because uh, you know uh, it it elevates your your career it helps in, uh, uh, in in you getting a job in in canadian labor market how important it is for someone to get Canadian education. Uh, tell our uh, audience so that they can also set their expectations accordingly. So uh, Canadian education has a very major difference as compared to education from back home in Pakistan. Although I did the A-levels and O-levels, which is UK-based qualifications, but I did see a major difference when I started studying in Canada. The diploma here is not just based on scoring 90 plus marks, reading books, memorizing the content, or just practicing your material. It's more focused on 
teaching you soft skills such as speaking skills, uh, presentations, uh, group work, teamwork, all these sort of skills are what employers demand in the market. I've seen like um, many of my friends who are in Pakistan, uh, when they finish their qualification, they have not really focused on their career that much as compared to their qualifications. They are like, they finished their BBA, they finished their masters, but they have never ever worked in their life. Diploma here really encourages you to focus on practical skills. The colleges here help you in finding jobs, not just after you graduate, but even during your qualification, there are, let's say, for example, you are in a three-year diploma or a two-year diploma. Right. If you research on the college website, you can find co-op programs. Those programs are priceless. When you do co-op programs, there are one to two to three semesters in some programs where you have to do a co-op term. Co-op term would be a three to four month work opportunity, paid work opportunity in many cases, in which an employer will hire you and you have to do that job if you want to graduate from your education. That work experience which you do during your education will give you a huge competitive edge when you try to enter the job market because when you're entering the job market, you won't you won't be like uh, who, a person who has no experience right. working in a professional environment. You would be someone who have all the academic knowledge. You have all the soft skills because you have graduated from a reputed college or university. And at the same time, you will have the huge advantage of having worked in the Canadian job market, which is something which employers value a lot. Right. So because you had already studied in Canada, uh, I understand that even when you are studying, you have the opportunity of working on campus, off campus. And in most of the cases, you don't even need a work permit to do so. I think that also helps in improving your language skills, building your confidence, even though the experience might not be in your chosen field because you're studying for the time being. Uh, so tell us about that because I understand. And in fact, I was reviewing your, in fact, I reviewed your, your your details earlier as well in your immigration application. But I was reviewing your LinkedIn profile and I saw that, in fact, you did work while, while you were uh, studying and it was related to your own field, uh, uh, tax related something. So tell us about that, how important it is and uh, do people get hold of job while they're work while they're studying and does it help in their finances? Yes. So uh, an international student, I'll talk about the international student first. If they come here on a study permit, they're uh, allowed to work a certain number of hours each week. And the reason they limit the hours is so that people don't avoid going to college. They're, they're having good attendance and all. But you are allowed to work here. You're allowed to work up to 20 weeks, which is uh, considered a part-time job. That that f type of money is good enough for you to afford your accommodation, your month-to-month uh, -month expenses. Uh, it may not be enough to afford your fees, but it is something to do which is not just for the money, but you get all the practical work experience by working in organizations who take part-time students as employees. And uh, another uh, element about the work experience that I've done it was not just the part-time art jobs that I did. Right. I tell everyone who, who, who try to ask me about how was my experience, the most important thing to focus on is your first job in this country. If you're focusing on a field related job, if right. you get your first, if you land your first job, second, third, fourth is much, much easier to get. So I try to motivate people if you're trying to do a job search in a new country, you're a new immigrant here. Don't don't rush things. Stay focused, stay patient. There are a lot of job opportunities here, but you have to wait for the right opportunity for the right time. Once you land your first job and you do experience like four months or even six month experience in that job, second, third job, then you have options to choose from. That's why I tell everyone to focus on the first job. During my studies, I was given advice from my uh, seniors that if you do field-related job during your studies, you will have a competitive edge. And near my uh, residence in Toronto, uh, there was a tax firm. 
uh, that tax firm used to open up for the tax season, which here is around January to May. So I approached them before tra tax season that I'm an international student and I'm looking to gain work experience, regardless of whether they pay me money or not, like an unpaid internship, because I realized the importance, the value is not in the money of your first job, but it's the experience. Sure. So I did that first job for four months, for one year of my studies, and that was an unpaid job. And I did the same job again for a paid job for four months the next year. Okay. Now, as soon as I graduated, I applied jobs for three three months. I was doing a job search. And mm -hmm. in that time, I was I traveled back and forth from Pakistan too. However, when I fully, when I was applying for jobs full time, that unpaid work, which I did, and the four months paid, which I did, that helped me get my full-time job. And that first full-time job, which I did, helped me get my current job. So it's all related to each other. You just have to be patient and you have to be focused that, and you have to be smart. You have to think about how you can have a competitive edge. If you're studying here, I would advise everyone, don't just focus on going to class and that's it and then you're, you're allowed to have fun. That's fine. This is a very, uh, this is a country that has a lot of entertainment options. But the main thing to remember is do not lose your focus. You're focus, here. Yeah. If you're here as a student, a lot of times your parents have done a lot of sacrifices to send you here as a student. And I've seen many people who have wasted their times. They have failed their courses. They're not focused on their studies. They're just having a good time here while their parents are heartbroken back home. So right. you have to be respectful of your parents when you move to this country. Stay focused. Yes. Stay focused on your goal. Meet new people. Meet good people who are successful people so that you're around an environment which will boost your success. So that's what my advice would be to anyone who is looking for jobs, who are looking to plan to come to Canada, who are looking to study here. And Mr. Amr is one of the best consultants here, which will make sure that your, your immigration matter is smoothly done. Yeah, thank you very much for the recommendation. Um, what we try to do over here at our company is to focus on the settlement base philosophy rather than you know just focusing on getting some clients which of course is um, the main purpose of the business we serve the clients we get paid but uh, assisting them and uh, this series of uh, interviews is part of it because you guys are the ones who have that knowledge you have gone through the difficulties and barriers and you have the tips and suggestions that are practical rather than you know it's not bookish it's actually practical so let me uh, let me ask you uh, more questions related to um, the the study uh, study uh, and and work related opportunities. So uh, while you were studying, you had the opportunity of working. But Canada is is a country where if you if you compare it to other countries, um, uh, students are usually get they usually get temporary status in the country they are studying in. That status often expires when the program ends. So they have to return to their home country after graduation. And Canada, on the other hand, has programs designed to help international students gain Canadian work experience after graduation. And if they wish, subsequently transition to permanent residency and eventually citizenship as well. So a post-graduate graduation work permit is one of the options where if you, if you have graduated from a two-year postgraduate uh, program, you are eligible for three years. Uh, work permit after graduation. You also did that, and you also had a postgraduate work permit, if I'm not mistaken. So tell us about that uh, as well, because uh, people would like to hear it from someone who has experienced it. So firstly, I would like to say that uh, this country, Canada, is one of the most unique countries in terms of respecting immigrants. The country here wants immigrants to move here. That's why you will see a lot of you, everyone who's planning to immigrate would know someone who has done so. Like I would say I have so many people who have actually immigrated, not even my friends, but also my relatives have also immigrated. Uh, the reason a lot of people are able to do that, like you would wish to do that, but a lot of people are able to do that is because this country facilitates immigrants. One of the reasons they want to do so is because 
of population like uh, this country is huge in size but less in population so people the government wants people to come here but the government does not want just anyone to come here they want skilled people to come here which is why they have the point system that's where young professionals like me benefit from this uh strategy of the government because young professionals from let's say pakistan india bangladesh uh, sri lanka all these south asian countries are very uh, well educated and they are also working professionals the government here wants these young professionals to immigrate here settle here raise families here because they want these type of skilled people to grow this economy of this country because uh, population is one of the biggest strengths of a country if it's a skilled population educated population which is why when i moved here my plan was always to stay here uh, long term because i knew there are many options for uh, a person like me to stay here continue living here the government is not trying to get rid of you they are trying to make you stay here and there are many pathways which a good immigration consultant can provide you options whether you are young or if you are of more age if whatever qualifications you have there are different options based on your points which you get in the immigration system i am one of the lucky ones because i studied here if you study here if you work here you already get a lot of bonus points right. which other people who are directly immigrating may not get so my pathway was very uh, facilitated by the government i get bonus points i get uh, work experience points i get age points all of those points add up to make me a very good candidate which this country wants to retain and post graduate work permit which mr amir was talking about is a permit which students get after they finish their studies the government give you 2 to 3 year permit which is more than enough time for you to gain a good job gain good work experience gain sufficient points so that you can stay back here on pr or pr status so that's one of the best things which a student can get here which is a post graduate work permit whether you study here one year whether you study here a bachelor's or a master's everyone gets a post graduate work permit yeah so a very good advice and i'd add to that that you know even if you don't have work experience and with that one year work experience you can qualify to immigrate to canada after one year under canada experience class and if you already had some work experience back home uh, so you are you perhaps are already eligible to apply um with those added bonus points that may increase your points your ranking points in the express entry program uh, so it could be a very good decision for you to come and study in canada if you are not immigrating for the time being or it could be a strategy for the permanent residency as well at the end of the day and with the inception of this student direct stream and with the addition of pakistan to this stream we have other countries already in that stream we have india china philippine vietnam senegal morocco but now we have pakistan as well so it's an expedited system good opportunity for students to consider and they don't really have to wait for 2 3 months now it's only 20 business uh, days yes. and um, if you fulfill the criteria basically so it, it's a good advice uh, from you and people should uh, listen to it but once you became permanent resident um, you were already working but then when you became permanent resident i think i'm assuming that the pathway or your your journey to canada became a, a bit easier because you know you don't really need a separate work authorization yes. to work in canada you already authorized to work in canada as a, as an immigrant and then it also leads to your citizenship um and if you have lived in canada on temporary basis uh up to one year of that stay could be counted towards your citizenship so you become citizen uh, earlier than any other immigrant because you've already spent time here in canada yes so when you became a permanent resident um, how do you feel first of all about it and did it make it easier for you to look for employment and one one concern of you know getting a, a job offer and then getting it approved from the labor market um, uh, labor department rather uh what do you what do you say about that so firstly like when you get a uh, pr that's one of the best feelings in your life when you hold the card in your hand it feels very good you feel you have achieved something in your life so that's a very uh, positive memory in my life 
Secondly, I would say that after you get PR, it's not about um, whether you are life becomes much easier. Think from the perspective of employers when they are hiring someone and they want to hire someone long longer term, like more than a year or two years. They would obviously prefer someone who is on PR or citizen as compared to someone on a just a work permit. A uh, work permit is good for a maximum of three years. So if you have one year remaining on your work permit and you're applying for a job, I know like legally the employers cannot discriminate against you. You're authorized to work anywhere in Canada in any field. However, if you think from their perspective, if they want someone longer term in a role, they would obviously prefer someone who has PR as compared to uh, someone on work permit. And I'm aware that back when I was on work permit, I was trying to apply for the government jobs. And one of the requirements was PR. So I was not even eligible for certain jobs, which uh, like the government jobs. And I'm sure there may be some other uh, fields in which you cannot even apply if you don't have PR. So definitely the wealth of opportunities, which is already very much in Canada, it increases even more after you get PR. And that's, and even like, even after about the citizenship, I would say that if you're a student here, or if you have stayed in Canada before, your time period to apply for citizenship is shortened, which is also another edge because then traveling becomes much easier. If you are working in a um, job opportunity in which you are required to travel out of Canada to maybe to Europe or to some other countries, uh, you if you have a Canadian passport, it's much easier to travel. You don't need visa in so many countries. It's a, a very uh, well-reputed uh, travel document. So that's how you get edge in the job market. If you talk about citizenship, if you talk about PR, so it helps you a lot. Anything which gives you an edge will help you in a job market, which is true for not just Canada, but any other country in the world too. That Canadian passport, um, I would say um, no one can deny the fact that it is a powerful passport. And you talk about any field, especially my field, when I travel to various countries to conduct immigration seminars, I actually am very thankful that I have a Canadian passport that allows me to travel anywhere, save for a few countries. Um, but um, I rarely check uh, if I need a visa. I do check it, by the way, but uh, I am always uh, happy to see that it is either on arrival or visa free, especially in Europe, it's all visa free for Canadians. So it's a good thing. And I hope that you also get hold of that important document very, very soon. Yes, very, soon very... I will be getting it. Yes. yes, that is great to know. Now, um, so we talked about uh, uh, your transition from student to, of course, a permanent resident, and you have been a professional. Um, uh, just give our audience a little bit of idea about your particular profession for accounting. What is the scope of accountants and and um, a management accountant and other otherwise financial accountant uh, auditors so all related uh, fields uh, related to finance and accounting what is the scope here and if a person who is qualified uh, will he be able to find a job especially in the bigger cities like toronto uh, vancouver and other metropolitan cities of canada how good is is the scope of this profession uh yes uh, toronto is where i live and any city which is as big as Toronto, similar to uh, Vancouver, Calgary, all these cities in Canada's, uh, Canada have a lot of job opportunities for the accounting and finance field. I did CPA here, so and my focus was always to get into auditing, auditing field. And that's what I'm doing. I do audits, basically, for uh, where I work right now. And uh, there is a lot of potential. There is a lot of job opportunities here, which... I have at my disposal, I have various options, which is what I love about uh, about the economy of Canada. I have options. I, I'm not stressed about whether I have a job or will I not have a job. I'm, I'm, I can't say I'm stressed, but I'm worried about uh, what will I do next, which is, which is a blessing in disguise because you do not have to worry about basic things as to how you will afford to live here. You have options as to what will you do next, whether you want to pursue your passion 
in a particular field, whether for me, whether I have to do accounting, whether I have to do auditing, whether I have to go in finance or banking, all these different options are at my disposal at the moment. And I feel that if someone says that the job market here is saturated or if there, it's hard to get job, mostly you would be hearing that from someone who have not yet landed that first job, which I talked about before. You have to get your first job. I, pers I accessed all the employment agencies here during my uh, job search when I was doing it the first time. And they had the requirement there that if you have a six month experience from before in this field, then it's much, much easier for them to refer you to a role if you're going to employment agencies, which may be private, which may be funded by the government. So there's a lot of opportunities here, a lot of help from the government, from organizations. There is a lot of website which help you find your job, which you can pick and choose basically what you want to do, which will fit your career, not just any job. And once you focus, once you get on the first job, second, third, fourth becomes much, much easier. And I would say that this country will really, really help you in terms of finding a job. There's, you don't have to worry about what will you do, whether there's lack of help, lack of help from the government. It's all geared towards making you successful, which is what I like about here. Right. And uh, talking about the help available, it's not only the government. I've seen that the Canadians are uh, inherently um, welcoming people. So let me ask you a very honest and, and frank question. Uh, I mean, you, I expect you to you you'd be responding honestly and frankly when you studied here and then also became a permanent resident and you're working here. So na naturally, you're you're uh, spending your time with Canadians. Um, so what is the general attitude of Canadians toward uh, immigrants? Uh, is it uh, warm, welcoming, or is it um, okay, indifferent? What? How do you rate them? And I ask uh, this question of my all of my um, guests, and uh, the response has been identical. I just I'm looking for a different answer if there is a different answer. So let's hear your answer. So. Canadians are just neighbors of United States. And right. these two countries are very similar in terms of infrastructure and all. But the biggest difference between Canada and United States is the level of multiculturalism. The way Canadians accept, promote, and feel proud of their identity. One of the identity of Canadians is that it's a multicultural country. I have personally never felt never had to face any sort of discrimination. That's not just not just because of the culture here, but also because legally you're protected from discrimination. If someone fires you or does not treat you the same way in a job environment or any educational environment, you can do legal action against them. It's not something which is promoted at any level of government. It's not promoted within society. And personally, when you are an international student in Canadian colleges, you would feel as if you're not the minority, you're the majority. There's so many people from different countries who are not native Canadians. And I felt for one reason that native Canadians are the minority here. There's so many immigrants here. So you right. will never feel as if you are discriminated. You will never feel as if you are away from your country other than family. Family is the thing which you miss the most. Life here is so fast paced that people don't get time to spend with each other that much. Everyone here is working, uh, they're focused on their careers, and it's very hard to spend a lot of time with your uh, family here. But I would say that in terms of discrimination, I have personally never felt and I feel very blessed to be in this country, very peace, peaceful, less stress. Uh, there is no such elements which I hear on the news, such as what happened in New Zealand, what happens in Australia or in the UK as well. In this recent elections, there was a lot of polarization. Right. Canada is not like that. The, the Recently, Canadians held a federal election and parties from all range were debating the point of immigration. And what I realized was whoever spoke the most about immigration, they won the election. That's mm -hmm. how this 
people are here that they are so they are not voting for people who are not in favor of immigration so they treat you with a lot of respect here the society the government and even your friends and family here uh, from any background they treat you with respect they don't treat you based on your identity you have to respect others to get respect and that's what you have to do here too right so uh, to conclude i would ask you are you satisfied with the level of job you have uh, of course it also involves money as well um, not always but it is part of the equation money uh, the way you are compensated and of course you are you're respected by your employer as well uh, you have a scope of progress as well how satisfied satisfied do you feel that you are uh, in terms of employment in terms of quality of education uh, a quality of um, i would say rather uh, life here in, in in canada quality of education of course we have the idea that it's the best country to get education but quality of life does it improve and are you satisfied with that uh, yes definitely so i would say that when you come to canada do not expect to become rich from the day one you have to realize that gradual and planned growth is going to be more fruitful for you in the long term as compared to someone who is looking to get in the best ideal job from day one i've had experiences with people who are planning their career they're slowly re, uh, planning their next steps as to what they should do next because they're thinking long term. They know that in 10 years or five years, they want to reach a level. And if they are patient, because if you're constantly switching jobs for the re, for only money, because you can get a highly paid job here. However, you're not really learning the actual practical work, which is very important and which is the main priceless thing if you are constantly switching jobs three months six months it looks bad on your resume too that you are not staying anywhere for the long term and it gives a negative impression to your future employers i am satisfied in terms of my present job because i realized that the slow and gradual uh, career path which i'm taking is progressing and it's always progressing here it's not just in terms of what duties you are doing because the current job which i'm doing i feel very blessed because every day is a new experience for me i'm learning new things and every uh, i'm here since almost two years now and i'm learning new things every day dealing with new sort of work which is i feel personally i'm growing i'm growing in terms of not just my career but also my knowledge and my expertise and this is which is what i will advise to anyone however people who I've seen people who who are not doing any job because they're saying whatever we want, this is our minimum income requirement. We will not go for a job which is less than that. That's their personal goal. Then you have to realize that you have to be patient. I know someone who was unemployed for three months because they wanted a specific income job. They had so many job opportunities, but they did not want to go for a job which is lower than that particular income level. But within three months, he did get the job he was looking for. So all you have to prioritize. If you are willing to go for a higher income job, then you have to be more patient and more. Uh, you have to plan ahead. What is your ideal job? If you are going for just getting a job in your field, then you have to evaluate what will be best for you in the long term because there's so many options here that you can get caught up in simply getting employed just because you want a job. But if you don't think ahead, then you may be stuck there for several years and then realize that you could have done something different in the past. Yeah, the strategic planning is very, very important. Not only that you need to make sure that you don't go in a dead end job. It might be highly paid job, but it could be a dead end job. It could be a good job, but there, are, there might not be good prospects of growth in that. So you might have to start from a lower rung of the ladder in your own field. Um, I was interviewing someone who, whom I assisted uh, 20 years ago in coming to Canada as a computer programmer. This guy is a CPA now in Canada, and uh, he changed his career altogether, starting from a lower rung of the ladder and gradually going higher. So I have to concur with your advice that um, small baby steps 
um, is what is needed instead of, and you might look back at your home country and you see that your friends are going forward and and your space is slow in Canada. But then once you um, have things get going, um, you would be, you know, climbing very, very high, very, very long jumps in your career. So I think that's a good advice. So um, to conclude, uh, if you have any other separate advice that we might not have covered in uh, this interview, please do so. I will definitely advise uh, people who are looking to immigrate uh, out of their countries that firstly, Canada is, in my opinion, the best destination. If you are willing to take the plunge of going away from your home country, then this country will is the country which will make you feel most welcome. That's one advice that if you plan on immigrating, Canada is the destination. If you are in any phase of your life, if you are currently someone who's pursuing masters in their home country, there is option to come here as a student or as an immigrant, depending on what are your qualifications. If you are uh, just planning on pursuing bachelor's or a diploma, then this is also one of the best countries to do that. If you are a very experienced, skilled professional, there are many options here for skills of certain fields which are highly paid and you can get immigration based on those skilled trades. So I would say that for all uh, facets of life, this country is a complete package, not just, and people don't just come here for education or just for immigration. It's the quality of life too, which is something which you don't realize once before you come here. For example, I would say I live in Toronto. There is a TTC subway system, Toronto Transit Commission. Right. That subway system, after using it for the several years I've been here, and my home city of Karachi is sixth largest in the world, I cannot even believe how can a city like Karachi not have this type of a subway system or a public transportation system. Some things you cannot even comprehend after you move here, which are so, so easily available here. And back home, people are trying to work towards that their whole lives, that they want something to do, which is easily available here. Health is very accessible here. If you are on a PR or a work permit, it's actually free. Healthcare is free here. A lot of people who are living good, a good life in, let's say, a Middle Eastern country, they still want to immigrate here because of quality of education for their kids. Public free education is of one of the best qualities in the world here. Whereas back home or in Middle East or in any other European country even, they are paying private colleges and universities thousands of dollars and the quality is less than what it is here. So these things are amazingly easily available for everyone who is willing to take the step, move here, and I guarantee you, you won't regret that decision. Perfect, uh, Walid, uh, on behalf of Amir Ismail and Associates and my audience uh, who are watching you, uh, we are very thankful for you to spare your time on a working day for us to let us know about your experience so that people can learn and they can understand uh, the transition and get uh, good suggestions from you so that they can set their expectations accordingly and don't make those mistakes that you've made. Um, wonderful to have you on the show and I wish you all the best in your uh, career in Canada and be in touch. We are in Thank the same you, place. Mr. Ismail. Thank you so much. All right. Take, Take care, care, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. That was uh, Walid Said. Um, our um, young professional from Toronto, accounting professional, and he was um, uh, uh, very, very helpful in advising us about his experience as an immigrant, as a student first, and then as an immigrant uh, as well. And I have to concur with him on his advice that Canada is one of the best countries uh, in terms of quality of life, quality of education. In fact, it has been ranked as number one in the best countries ranking for quality of life for four years in a row now as of 2019. And it's also amongst the top 15 countries on the UN's 2018 Human Development Index of 2019. So um, if you're interested in getting in touch with us, um, uh, our team in Toronto, 
or back home in in Pakistan, please f- feel free to get in touch with us. Um, I'll leave with you uh, the contact information of our uh, Toronto and um, uh, Pakistan office on your screen, and we'll be in touch until uh, uh, the next show with another young, uh, motivated professional like Faleed Saeed Faridi. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen.